This lesson is part one of section 8.4 on exponential growth graphs. So today's target is to be able to graph an exponential growth function. Now we're going to begin with graphing a linear function. This is what we've been doing for a long time. This is y equals mx plus b. Um, the b is just zero here, right? So plus zero. The only thing is I'm going to use a table to just show what the table values would be because that's how we're going to graph exponential growth functions. We're going to use a table. So if I was going to use a table negative 2 to 2, I just added the last number here, 3. Um, I'm going to plug in this for the x value. So this would be y is equal to 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. So I have the coordinate negative 2, negative 6. Okay, and I plot my point. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and just fill in this table real quick. And we're going to plot those points over here. And obviously, I could have also just done y equals mx plus b and plotted 0 and then used the slope up 3, right 1. But there's my line. That's called a linear function because I get a line. Now, our next example looks really similar to that, except for this is called an exponential growth function. Okay, So instead of linear, this is called exponential growth. And now notice that even though this looks a lot like what we had before, it's not 3 times x, this is 3 to the x power. Okay, so we're going to use a table to graph this to see what it would look like. So I'm going to use negative 2 all the way to 3 instead of just negative 2 to 2. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and plug in these table values. So right here I have negative 2, which that's an x value. So that means it's going to replace this x here in this exponential growth function. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 3 to the negative second power. Now we have an unhappy exponent and based on our exponent properties we know we have to move this unhappy exponent with the base into the basement to make it happy again. So that becomes 1 over 3 to the positive second power and then we can simplify that and make that 1 ninth. Okay? So we have a coordinate here and that coordinate has an x value of negative 2 okay, and a y value of 1 ninth. So there's my coordinate negative 2 comma 1 ninth. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to um, now plug in negative 1 into that function here. So I'm going to just get 3 to the negative first power, which means, again, that I have an unhappy exponent that needs to move to the basement. So we have 1, to the, 1 over 3 to the first power, which is 1 third. So we have a coordinate, negative 1, 1 third. Okay, so let's write that in, negative 1, 1 third. Okay, now we can kind of cruise through this because this will be a little bit easier. Now we have 3 to the 0 power. Well, we know that anything to the 0 power is always 1. So now we have the coordinate 0, 1. Okay. Plugging in 1, we have 3 to the first power. That's going to give me 3. So I have the coordinate 1, comma 3. Again, if I plug in 2, remember this is going to replace this x here. That's 3 to the second power, which is 9. So I have the coordinate 2, 9. And finally, when I plug this 3 in for the x right here, that gives me 3 to the third power, which is 27. Okay, so there's my final point. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and plot these points. So let's go ahead and start with this first point here, negative 2, 1 ninth. Now when you plot this, finding negative 2 is really easy on the x-axis, but now you've got to use 1 ninth for the y value. So 1 ninth, if we think about that, that's a little bit more than 0 but it's less than 1. So that's what I'm going to do when I graph this. I'm going to kind of estimate. I want to go up a little bit from this x-axis because that would be a little bit more than 0, but definitely less than 1. So I'm going to just plot kind of where it looks like it would um, be. So I just estimate where 1 ninth would be. Same thing for negative 1 1 third. I can find negative 1 really easy on the x-axis, but when I go up 1 third, I just have to kind of eyeball where that would be. Okay. So my two first points here are a little bit difficult because of the fractions, but again, you're just estimating. From here on out, it's pretty easy to plot these points. So 0, 1 would be right here. Okay. Then we have 1, 3. 1, 3 would be right there. 2, 9 is all the way up here. And then we have this, this next point, 3, 27. Obviously, 3, 27 is way off this graph, so I'm just going to kind of put it somewhere up here. So I'm going to follow the 3 and say here's... 327. So obviously that's not exactly where 27 would be, but it kind of gets me the idea that that point is going to be way off this graph. So this is called an exponential growth graph because 
see how quickly those values started to um, increase? It's growing very rapidly. So when I connect these, I use a smooth curve to connect these points. And as you can see, this is really not linear at all. A linear function, right, has a slope that goes up continuously at the same constant rate. Well, here, we don't have that same constant rate here. This is called an exponential growth because it grows very rapidly. So that's your basic understanding of an exponential growth graph. That's um, what we're going to practice tomorrow in class. Good job. I'll see you tomorrow.